Hey everybody, thank you so much for tuning into Midgard Musings today and watching today's video. My name is Jesse and I'm the host here on this channel, as you may or may not already know. If this is your first time, I appreciate your support. For everybody else who's already supported Midgard Musings through your views, comments, likes, and subscriptions, thank you very much. I want to call to attention the fact that I am actively and aggressively seeking 2,000 subscribers by or before January 1st, 2020. All right, that means that we need to get at least three new subscribers every day until then, and your help is greatly appreciated. I couldn't do this, well, I could do this if it wasn't for each and every one of you, but it wouldn't be nearly as fun because I would just be talking to nobody. All right, so everybody's participation and involvement on this channel is greatly appreciated. I invite you to please write down here, see it, right down there, please click that subscribe button you don't want to miss any videos here on this channel be sure to click the bell notifications because then you will get notified every time that I upload new content all right guys I appreciate everybody's uh, everybody's support and I look forward to learning new things with each and every one of you about Norse heathenry Germanic paganism all that kind of fun stuff so please become a subscriber today that button is right down here it costs you literally nothing to become a subscriber and then if you want to be notified just click the bell for notifications it's all right if you don't but it is appreciated if you do check the description down below for all the other ways that you can support Midgard Musings through Facebook Patreon Teespring Redbubble uh, anything else that you see down there click on the links follow them see if it's something that fits you I appreciate all your support let's jump in to today's video hail and thank you all All right, everybody, hail and welcome to this week's episode of Midgard Musings. Thank you so much for joining me today as we talk about the Norns, okay? I've already got my candle lit and my incense burnt, uh, so we're already in the mode of this week's discussion. This is a topic of discussion that's been suggested by a number of people who uh, watch my videos and support me on the social media platforms that I'm currently distributed on, just Facebook and YouTube mainly. Um, so this kind of goes out to those of you who uh, watch my videos and have asked, you know, for some more uh, information that is surrounding a bit of the, the mythology around the Norns. Okay, so this is a precursor to another video um, that I think is an important part of heathenry in general, not just um, not just the, the Norns being about the mythology aspect of it, but but something that about the Norns that surrounds the Norns that's going to lead into practicing heathenry, practical heathenry, grassroots heathenry, things that we do day to day and with ourselves and with our tribes or our collective of people that is definitely an important part uh, for us to understand how this whole thing works. But today the topic of discussion is going to be on the Norns themselves. So for those that don't know who or what the Norns are, um, in Norse mythology the Norns or as the plural term in Old Norse is Nornir are female beings who kind of create and control fate, as it were, okay? And we're gonna talk a little bit uh, throughout this video and in the videos that come from this, uh, from this one uh, about the concept of fate in a Norse Germanic thing uh, or, or, or view, I guess you could say. Um, you know, but fate is sort of implacable, right? There, there's, there's nothing that we can do to control or um, change our fate. I say change our fate and I say you know very strongly but control I say somewhat loosely and we're going to get into why that is uh, throughout this video and the videos that come from this. Uh, so this this sort of power, this ability, this thing that the Norns themselves do and have makes them a pretty formidable and powerful entity or entities in the uh, cosmology of, of Norse beliefs, okay? Um, even not just with mankind, but with the gods and with every living creature, everything has uh, to be subject to the Norns decree, if you will. What is fated to you uh, from the Norns is what it is, and there's nothing that you can do to, um, you know, change that final fate, so to speak. Now, according to one description of uh, the Norns in some old in some old Norse literature, there's one particular poem 
called Fafnismol um, that say that there are a great many number of Norns, or there, there are many Nornir that exist, and uh, that there's no real exact number. Um, some say that they, uh, there are some that come from the gods, some that come from the elves and the dwarves, and, and so on and so forth. But the most popular version, or the most popular view of the Norns, uh, stems from the uh, poem Voluspa, which, if I recall correctly, is a poem that is found in the Codex Regis, one of the original manuscripts of Old Norse literature. Now, in that poem, there is a um, grander, uh, you know, a more, a more structured, more solid number that we have to go by. Um, and it's become the most popularized version of how we see the Norns uh, as modern heathens and, and, and in recent history, I guess you could say. So in Voluspa, uh, the Norns are, uh, are they're, they're, they're three of them, okay? And they are mysterious beings uh, who don't seem to come from any sort of recognized uh, population or, or source that you see in some of the other myths. You know, they are, no, they are not gods, they are not monsters, they are not, um, they are not elves, they are not dwarves, they are not, they are the Norns, okay? Um, they are sort of in a category uh, in amongst themselves, at least within the mythology. And the three of them, as they are named and labeled, uh, suggest that their ability, uh, can, can, that their powers or their abilities is able to uh, construct and um, kind of control to a certain degree the uh, concept of time, okay? So the, uh, the three Norns are named Urd, Verdandi, and Skuld. Now I'm going to put their names on the screen here somewhere for you to see, but in Old Norse, Urd, or Urdr, is the past, things that have already happened, the things that have happened before us that we cannot change. What's this, what, is, what happened in the past is, is out of our control. Um, and Urd, to me, is the, the Norn that is over what we call Urlog. Urlog being the inherited luck uh, that we ourselves have received from our ancestors, that there's nothing we can do to change what Urlog we have received. So Urlog falls under the realm or the dominion or the, the, the control, if you will, of Urd. Okay? Now, the next one... <clears throat> And also, Ur uh, can, can sometimes be a popular uh, or common word uh, to use in and of fate, in and of itself, at least from this uh, view of things. So the next Norn that we hear about is Verdandi. And Verdandi is the now, quite simply. It is what is presently coming into being, what is presently happening, the things that are happening in the now. We, ourselves, today, as you watch this, um, if you are watching it today, uh, when it goes live, um, it is Verdandi. We are in v the Verdandi. We are in the now. We are in the things that are coming into being presently. So what we work with now, the, way, the things that are happening daily uh, for us as we live and as we experience this life, uh, falls into the realm of Verdandi. And it's always you know, changing. There's things that happen in the here and now that we have to sort of decide on whether or not we want to follow this direction, whether we want to follow that direction, which action do we want to take to meet the result or, the cer or a certain result. Okay, so Verdandi is the here, the now, that which is uh, currently happening, the present coming into being, the things that are coming into an ex in existence. It's the formation of the present, right? And then finally, we have the third uh, Norn, who is called Skuld. Okay, and skuld is a word in Old Norse that could mean should, or what should be, what will be, what shall be, should, shall, it, it, it connotates that we are thinking of the future, the things that have not yet happened, um, but that have the possibility that have uh, something that can happen later on in the future. So the things that we don't know yet, the things that we don't have a control over that have not yet happened, um, go into the realm of schooled. And that is how I kind of view uh, things uh, in my own uh, heathen practices. 
Uh, Ur is what we can't control from the past. Verdandi is the now and what we do have some control over. And Skuld is what has not yet happened and that the things that we do in the Verdandi will help shape the Skuld or the future. So their, their habitation, where they dwell, where they live, where they do their thing, uh, is a hall by the well Urdabrumr. Uh, the well of fate, the well of things that have happened, if you will. And it's this well in, in the mythology sits beneath the world tree Yggdrasil. Now, there are several different images uh, that we see throughout history. Um, people will draw or paint or form images of the Norns kind of working fate. That they, and, and some of them depict them uh, weaving things. Uh, you will see sometimes uh, they will be casting lots of wooden lots, or they will be carving things into bone or wood or something. And we uh, like to assume or, or, or have some sort of idea that what they carve are the runes, uh, since the runes in, uh, in this path are used for, you know, the mysterious divination type things, um, mystical work, magic. Uh, so it is likely that what is carved uh, when we see images like this are being carved by the uh, by the Norns are the runes. Um, the thumbnail video, uh, the thumbnail image that you see of this video, uh, kind of portrays a really neat imagery, and I've linked down in the comments where you can find um, uh, the the artist who did that that image, who I uh, was a, able to get permission from to use for this thumb, uh, for the thumbnail for this video, and she has the Norns depicted, kind of weaving a thread around. And in the thread are the runes. So that's a really cool depiction, really cool, um, you know, difference of a view of how and what the Norns are doing in their in their weaving and in their workings with with fate or, or that sort of thing. So there are those there are those three things. They they are uh, beings that sit at the base of the world tree Yggdrasil by Urdabrumr, the well of fate, if you will, and they are constantly feeding things into this well uh, that help kind of define the fate or the, or the future or the, or the lives of every living being, the gods and mankind included. Now, historically speaking, we don't see that there is any evidence uh, of the Norns being worshipped or venerated. Um, we do hear or see some things in Old Norse literature of a person who may lament his fate or his luck um, and, and sort of call out to the Norns as, as a thing to... Uh, give them a nod of, of what's going on with their fate or their luck. Um, we also see this uh, in ancient and medieval Germanic literatures. Um, so we can be sure that if in like the Viking Age time and in, in those uh, you know times that sort of follow the Christianization uh, conversion period of Scandinavia, um, that, they're, it, that it's possible to um, productively petition to the Norns, that there was some sort of belief system in, or the, of the Germanic tribes at that time, that there was something that they did, I'm trying to get the smoke out of my face, to petition to the Norns to help change their fates. Now, an ancient, more ancient aspect, pre-Christian times, uh, things that happened in, you know, uh, ancient Scandinavia, Archie in times, suggest that there was no belief of anything cosmic controlling our fates. What, what, the, what the people did, what they did, uh, it was it was set. They their 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 deeds are what kind of controlled the way things went. Um, and here's where I'm getting into some of the. I don't really think that this may have been exactly um, the way things were because the way I see some depictions of how fate was viewed in a Norse society or in a Norse view, Germanic view, is that fate was blind and utterly implacable. You can't change it. All that's left to you is, uh, is, is what you, you're kind of stuck with the hands you're dealt, and you have to decide on what attitude or what action you're going to take um, that's going to kind of determine uh, things. And I see, I'm, I'm kind of halfway on the, on, on the plane with that. I'm on the middle of the road when it comes to that because fate can change. We can change certain things um, about our lives. Now, fate ultimately, as far as terms of like the day you were born, the day we die, major, major things that have been fated, yes, it doesn't matter. You know, if I'm fated to die in a um, of old age, you know, let's just say I, I'm fated to die comfortably, peacefully at the end of my uh, time on, on Midgard, and if that's my fate, then I could go run through a field 
um, uh, chasing a, a, a bull who just got his nuts cut off and is now a steer and he's quite mad about it. Um, or I could, you know, weave in and out of traffic rec recklessly. Or I could, you know, get into a gunfight and um, nothing that I do there will kill me. I will not die in any of those things because my fate is to die of old age. Now, if my fate is to die in some sort of violent way, um, then there's nothing that I could do to protect myself to uh, control my life up to that point. It's going to happen regardless of what I do or not. Now, there are other things throughout our lives that have not yet happened, the schooled, you know, the things that in between those major life changing events, our births and our deaths and, you know, that sort of thing. There are major things um, that have, that can change, you know, so what is fated for us in between there is ultimately up to us to decide in the Verdandi, in the now, what actions we take to determine how the schooled or how the future or how that which will be or shall be will, do, will play out. Um, we can change certain things throughout our lives, at least the way I see it. Now, again, when it comes to the major things that the, the Norns have faded for me, obviously my faded day of birth is as such, and my faded day of death is as such, and there was nothing obviously I can do to change the first one, nor is there anything I can do to change the last one. Now, during since we're talking about faded days of birth, death, life, and that sort of thing, speaking of the birth aspect of it, a really neat thing to, to, to learn um, was that during the Viking Age, at least, it was quite common for people to serve a woman who had just been given birth to, uh, or just given birth to a child, uh, it was common for people to give her some porridge. Um, and they would call this porridge, it's, it was for the Norns, so the Norn porridge. Um, and the people believed that the Norns were always nearby uh, whenever a child was born. And the porridge was considered an offering to the Norns, and they, they hoped that the, the offering would, would please the, the norns, or that the, the norns would then weave a, a, a thread or something in the web or, or, or carve something into, the, uh, into the, the future of the child that um, was going to secure good health for not only them, but for the mother and for the family and that sort of thing. So that's a really neat thing that we've heard about um, from some of the information that we have surrounding historical texts. Now, there's a poem in the pro prose called Gilfaginning, I believe it is, um, that there were other Norns, so Snorri's influence of getting into some stuff may be a little bit muddied, um, but besides the three, that there were other Norns that were both benevolent and maleficent, or malevolent, and they ha would do things who, um, they would do things that could quite often reverse a person's uh, fortune or fate, you know. Um, now, again, that kind of goes outside of some of the things that I've picked up on from Arch Heathen time. So because it's in Gilfaginning, because it's Snorri's influence, that may be, you know, you might want to take that with a grain of salt. Um, but, um, you know, go, so, so there's that. Um, the Norns were believed to visit, uh, like I said earlier, the, 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 the children, uh, the, the mother of children, um, that were born to determine events in their life or to sort of set events in their life. This may be something that is depicted um, or, or picked up from from local folklore. I don't necessarily think that this is a broader view or a broader belief. It may just be, you know, uh, family or, or tribally or regionally adopted beliefs. Um, but one interesting thing from uh, the church in Borgund uh, in Norway, and I don't have the date of when this, this was found, but there was a certain runic inscription that was found in this church in Borgen, Norway. Um, and the runic inscription, inscription says something along the lines of, the Norns determine good and bad things, and they have brought great sorrow to me. Um, that's a loose translation. Another translation says that the Norns have done both good and evil. And I would lean more towards that belief of the description because what can be determined for someone's life is, you know, the, the uh, respective uh, definitions of good and evil. Uh, what is good for one may not be good for the other. Uh, it's, it's, it goes back to some of the tribalistic views of um, the, 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 the people of the land at the time and, and that good and evil and lawful and right. You know, these were all things that were deemed as what worked for the tribe. So if it worked for the tribe, it was good, and if it didn't, it was bad or evil. So some things, uh, in terms of what this good and evil could mean, 
from a larger heathen worldview could be have a lot of Christian influence in that when they thought it when bad things happened, when they got bad luck, that they were being cursed or that the fate was not kind to them or this or that. It could be all of that too. So my question is, as we wrap up the end of this video, is are we fated? Are we therefore fated for certain ends? Does what we do daily in our personal lives and in the lives of the tribes that we interact with, our, our, our collective of heathens, um, are we able to alter or change our fate? Now that is not a question I'm going to go into here today. That is a question that I want to go into in next week's video, which is going to be on the topic of weird and orlog and things. I mentioned orlog earlier in this video. Um, and like I mentioned towards the beginning of the video where, you know, this is going to be somewhat like a precursor to a future video. The Norns are in, are, are, are weavers of the web, weavers of weird. Um, and that may be a term and that may be a, a phrase that you've heard of and that you may not be 100% sure as to what it exactly is. And it's a whole video in and of itself that I want to do. It's nothing that I feel comfortable with just dabbling a little bit in um, right here and right now. So... That is going to be the subject of next week's video, and I hope that you will stick around um, and come back and join me for that discussion. If you don't want to miss anything here on the channel, all you need to do is right down below, click on that subscribe button, and if you want to be notified whenever I upload new content, please click the bell notification, and you will be. So stay tuned here on Midgard Musings next week for the discussion on Weird and Orlog and all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, let me know down in the description what you think of this video. What has been your experience in, with the Norns, um, how you work in your personal uh, heathen practices, and how you determine, you know, uh, fate, or how you see fate, how it fits in your own pagan practices. I'm anxious to hear what you all have to say. So thank you again for joining me today on this episode of Midgard Musings. I greatly appreciate it. Hail, and I will see you all in next week's video.